Welcome back to the award-winning Hometown Health. I'm Mark Roberts from East Brunswick High School in New Jersey. And I'm Beverly Onstead from Leesburg High School. On location this month at Etheridge Chiropractic in Fruitland Park as part of our back to school coverage. Often with similar symptoms, there have been recent links connecting ADD, ADHD, and hearing loss in children. Michigan State University reports that there are an estimated 8 million children in North America who have some degree of hearing loss. They say that on any given day, every elementary school teacher can expect to have one-fourth to one-third of his or her students without normal hearing. As a former teacher, I know all too well how even a little bit of hearing loss can affect how a student learns. We spoke with the specialists at Lake Ear, Nose and Throat about testing and the dangers of hearing loss in school-aged children. I think a lot of the behavior problems with children, they're not hearing. They, they can't hear the teacher, so they're off doing their thing and the teacher's calling them down for ADD and things like that. I think if they heard better, if you could get them to, um, to recognize that this might be a hearing problem along with a behavior problem, then you know you got a better chance of reinforcing the good behavior instead of the punishing for the bad. If a child has hearing loss, then it could be a temporary condition that can be corrected through surgical procedures. Maybe they need to have tubes placed in their ears and that usually can correct that and then they're hearing fine and everything is going to work well for them when they go to school. Um, for children who have more of a permanent hearing loss due to birth or some other illness that they may have had, then we will start talking to the parents about how we want to rehabilitate that by use of hearing aids, working with the school systems to make sure that there are speakers set up in the classroom so that the child can hear the teacher and not have distracting noises. We have physicians, we have physicians assistants, audiologists, and hearing aid specialists all on staff and we all work together. When we find a child that's in their early teens that has hearing loss, then they feel a little devastated, they're embarrassed. Something's wrong with them, they don't want people to know they have hearing aids and a lot of times they will not wear them. And so we have to look at other means of trying to help them in the classroom. If you are interested in comparing the similarities between mild hearing loss and attention deficit disorder, we've included a link to the Michigan State University's chart on our website. You'll find it, along with contact information for Lake ENT's audiology and hearing aid services, when you click the story titled, Hearing Loss and ADD at yourhometownhealth.com.